Okay, okay, ladies, start. Okay. A very happy post bright and sunny day today. Um, I'm really happy that um, with all the the sadness of uh, the COVID situation, we still have some sunlight coming into our lives and at least giving us some positivity. Suri Prakash says, Zindagi hamesha khubsurat hoti hai, I believe. And uh, at Inspiring Indian Women, we are all women that are inspired by each other, um, the prakriti or nature as we call it, and the inside, which we think is the strongest that women tend to uh, find uh, strength in. Over the years, uh, working with the entire Inspiring Indian team, we have met some really exciting women. We, exciting because they come from different professions, whether they are, they are from the army, whether they're uh, from the legal profession, whether they're doctors, whether they're accountants, whether they're creative dancers, um, whether they're artists. It's just the journey of being connected with a woman who's made herself known in her community and her professional uh, field and uh, worked to develop her skills and help uh, another lady or maybe a whole community. The reason we have today's show, we call it um, Powerful Women, is because it's still such an important thing uh, to be in fields where uh, you always feel that they're male dominated and women try are trying and have quite successfully made a niche for themselves. And um, this very evening, we have a beautiful uh, young lady um, who is from the legal profession. I mean, I have close affinity to law because I'm married to a lawyer. So I have deep respect and I see uh, the work that goes into plugging along. So I'm going to very warm um, heartedly welcome uh, a very inspiring, Indian lady who here in Britain works as a solicitor and her name is Reena Chug. Welcome Reena to our show this evening. Thank you, thank you so much Dashni, thank you for having me. No, it's a pleasure. I think there's there's a, there's um, uh, quite a few ladies that have already joined to support Reena and it's so important that, you know, we actually come out here on this platform in these difficult times to talk about things that might concern you and you might want to talk about which on a day-to-day -day basis you struggle with. I myself have had issues where I needed um, someone to help me in legal battles. So Rina, mm -hmm. uh, as I see from your, your very uh, fantastic background that you are a qualified solicitor, you're a mediator, rather than me just read out your, your CV, why don't you tell us um, very briefly what your journey has been to reach to this point today? Gosh, it's been it's been beautiful. So um, I think the reason why I start I got into law it's quite important to highlight that is because um, that's that's the background. It kind of runs in the blood. So uh, my dad he he's an um, advocate. Um, he was practicing in India in New Delhi. Um, so I kind of grew up around the smell and essence of what what law books are. Um, and despite sort of much um, hesitance and reluctance that I received from my from my family to go into law, I decided that that was the right thing for me. Uh, they wanted me to be a doctor uh, don't all Indian parents um, so but you know I think it's once you find what you're passionate about um, and if you go into the area and your parents give you the blessing to go actually pursue your dreams you will be the most successful in that and I had those blessings and I think rest is history I'm still continuing to learn I'm still developing what I'm doing uh, but very early stages of my career I've managed to achieve things which perhaps wouldn't have been possible um, if I wasn't so passionate about the law, if, if I wasn't passionate about wanting to make a difference. Um, so it's journey, journey, I've been qualified now since uh, 2015. So it's coming on to seven years. Um, in, in that time, I've worked at various uh, firms, large national firms, regional firms. Um, I've headed up departments. Um, so I specialized in litigation. So I've headed up litigation departments. Um, I've recently qualified as a mediator 
And really and truly the purpose of doing that has been to try and spread awareness within our communities to say, well, actually, we understand that you're reluctant to go to a lawyer because they all seem so frightening. I hope that will uh, that view will be changed today. Um, so, you know, mediation, mediation is a way of alternative um, dispute resolution where you can, you don't have to necessarily go to court. You don't have to be daunted by the high legal fees. You actually, um, you resolve your dispute by another method through a mediator. Now, as I say, the purpose of behind litigation and mediation is both to try and help people resolve conflicts. I'm so passionate about it. Um, you know, it, it's something I, I get so much satisfaction uh, from and I thoroughly enjoy it. So um, as, a, as a, did you tell us a little bit more about um, where you come from and what brought you into sort of, uh, uh, are you originally from, like born and brought up in the UK? Are you from another country? Yeah, so I am actually, I was born in Delhi. Um, yep. So my parents moved here when I was very young, about nine, 10 years old. Um, so there was the integration part of it. I could have, I could have gone more one way or the other, um, completely sort of um, given up in the circumstances to say my parents have moved me here, I've left my friends behind as, as approaching teenage, you could have had that mentality, but, um, you know, it was it was received well by me and, um, you know, did my schooling, university, um, everything here, and it's just progressed on from there, really. I think I'm fortunate, I'm fortunate that I managed to get this platform um, to, to be able to pursue my career in England, which gives me another advantage to be able to help women um, across the globe who share similarities with myself. So one of the things that I've always sort of uh, wondered, you know, being fascinated, uh, being in the legal free field. I, I come from uh, Mumbai, India, and uh, Every time I would see lawyers at high court, so wherever my college was nearby, um, I used to be quite uh, sort of uh, overwhelmed by their seriousness and their demeanor. Um, as a woman, when you enter this field in this country, it's probably a bit more chilled out now. But yeah. uh, do you still feel uh, sort of overwhelmed or now you're, you know, you've learned to find some inner strength that helps you deal with uh, maybe a larger firm or being in an environment where women sometimes tend to sort of worry if they're yeah. coming across. I think, you know, that's a very, very valid um, sort of way to feel because I would give you an example. So I, I specialize in uh, property and construction disputes. It's mainly sort of uh, male dominated um, field of work construction is. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it can, it can get a little bit, um, difficult at times uh, to try and actually put yourself across as somebody who's an expert in the field at the young age that I've managed to achieve the successes and achievements that I have. Um, so it can get difficult because I think it, it, it has, there is lots of women now going into law, uh, but a lot of them will actually change their careers after having children or after, yeah. you know, it's difficult to qualify. And I think you've got to persevere. You have to, you have to stay committed to it and you've got to really make your mark if that's what you're passionate about. I think nobody, nobody can tell you what you can and cannot do. Only you limit yourself. So I think yes. that's important. Yeah. That's a very uh, interesting uh, point because I have had friends uh, because of, you know, my connection with uh, lawyers that have, you know, taken a long time, probably gotten to somewhere like Clifford Chance or something or maybe yeah. or something and then decided, OK, you know what, I'm going to have a child now. I'm going to leave the city, get into recruitment or something of that sort mm -hmm. or a yeah. totally different profession because yeah. they want to more time with their kids but I also on the other hand see non-Asian women wow. who are colleagues and who are in this field who pursue and they're quite uh, dogged in their determination to to balance um uh, are you sort of uh, not at that juncture yet so you still have time yeah. to leave. Um, yeah I'm not at that juncture, juncture yet but I have to say that um it's, it's not something, I mean, I've, I've reached that point in my career where I don't really feel that 
it can shift now. Um, it would it would have to it would it would take somebody paying me um, a lot of money. Even then, I don't think money could buy the passion I have for wanting to make a difference. Um, so um, no, if, I think you're right in saying people do change their fields because other things take priority, and I think that's completely okay. It's completely okay to actually prioritize your family. But I think in between that, it's important to not lose yourself. Um, because you know you've got your own identity aside from the kids when they grow up they will go off to university schools yeah. um, where, where where does that leave you if you sort of compromise yourself what kind of example are you setting for for the children so you know we've got to remember what's the next generation going to learn from us are they going to see see mommy drop their career because she wanted to do something easier well why very right. Um, so one of the things that you probably must have seen with colleagues or friends that um, do they sort of come to a point where they burn out because this profession takes too much out of you or there's a way to balance this situation? So I think there is there is a way that you balance everything in life. And I think, you know, you've got to every day set time for yourself. Um, it's almost like how we are scheduled um, to say, right, we will eat at certain times. Some people drink water when they're thirsty. You have scheduled to go and exercise. I think it's so important to set time aside in the morning before you start your day um, to, to kind of absorb the energy that you are going to give off for the rest of the day, what your plans are, how it is that you better plan on improving from the day before. So I think time to self is very important, time to reflect on things that you've uh, missed um, and time to sort of improve on those things is, is really key. So I think that's probably how, I mean, personally, how I manage it is I wake up at 4.30, 5 a.m. and I've got three hours to myself in the morning uh, where I meditate, I do prepare for my day, um, I talk to myself, set goals and plan out the rest of the day. So yeah, that's, I think yeah. it's, time to self is very important, yeah. So if you get up at 4.30, what time do you actually go to bed? I go to bed. I'm in bed by 9. I fall asleep by 9.30. <laughs> you know, as, as I'm truly inspired, you know, because I work in the creative field, I do events and I do all sorts of uh, social things. Um, I struggle to go to sleep that early, but I, my best friend who is in a more uh, sort of corporate field, she, like you, gets up at 5 and she's like, yeah doing her yoga and meditation and like you planning her day before the day actually starts. Now, one of the things that intrigues me about women in this field, and I would like uh, the women that will watch the show either now or at a later point uh, on Facebook or Instagram, social media, uh, or even on WhatsApp is uh, asking you this question. Uh, why, um, so if a, if a lady is doing her business or she is being treated uh, badly by her employer, do women get scared to reach out to uh, people like you who might be able to advise them? And how would you tell ladies to connect with you and how would you be able to help them? And I don't mean in a particular matter, but uh, you could give us examples where you have helped ladies who, you know, who've been in a difficult, sticky situation legally. Yeah. So I think... It really is a case. I think I want to firstly highlight is that the reason why women, you know, of our communities, especially ethnic minorities, would have a little bit of that fear to approach a legal professional is because they've been they've been taught all along courts. Uh, police, all of these people are to stay away from, right? But that's, well, that's not, you know, we're here. People like myself are here. I'm here today because I really want people to, women to reach out to me. I'm somebody, we, we connect with familiarity. So the reason why I target my audience in this community is because I want women to not hesitate to come to me to say, well, actually we understand <laughs> And we know that she's not going to judge us in whatever respect it is, whatever it is that we're going through. Because I, nine out of 10 times, you know, or 10 out of 10 times, I can say I've heard something worse. So I work in this profession, I have done for 12 years now, um, albeit being qualified as a solicitor for um, almost seven, but I've heard the worst of the worst. There's nothing that would all 
ever shock me. So not to be afraid to come to somebody, especially if you can relate to them. You know, I think the trust is really important and I want people, it's easier said than done, but I do want people to be able to reach out to me so I can help them. And confidentiality is key for us. So they don't have to worry about anything going anywhere other than just two ears that I have, um, you know. So it, it, there is that helping hand that I'm offering now and whoever it is that will watch this later to say, well, actually they do have somebody that will care because I genuinely do care because, you know, our women, um, women of ethnic minority, they don't need to, they don't need to feel that there isn't anybody that they can relate to, there isn't anybody who's going to listen. Um, you know, there is, there is somebody, there's many lawyers like me out there who belong to the ethnic minorities and we want to make a difference and help our women um, do the best in their profession. And I mean, if there is a workplace conflict, there is no harm in just picking up the phone to me um, and saying, look, how do I go about it? You know, it's not, it's not always about me charging uh, for, for the work I do. That's the commercial side of thing. But, you know, it's very important to remember that, you know, I'm here to try and help our women get that courage um, or point them in the right direction. So they shouldn't, they shouldn't feel, um, you know, <laughs> any hesitance because what is wrong is wrong. Uh, people can sometimes get bullied in workplace. People can sometimes feel that um, they're overlooked. Um, they can be wrongdoings that are happening. The longer you let it go on for, I think the worse it becomes. So right. um, yeah, I think it's important to address them. It's important to address them in the right way, yes. So here's the, here's the question I have for you uh, in terms of uh, the legal aspect. If there is a marked difference between actually suing someone and actually taking them, you know, getting advice and the actual case that will take place, this whole process for a woman, um, how would you say, 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 I'll give you an example. If a lady um, is working for the NHS at the moment and she, for whatever reason, feels that she hasn't been treated right and she's really upset, would it be wrong advice to say, you know what, actually, if you are not being treated fairly, is to contact a legal expert, get a second opinion? And how difficult is it for someone to reach out to someone like you? Where would they find you? Would they have to Google you? Are there law society places where people can look? What is what is the process? So I'm I'm with solicitors you can you can go on what's called a law society um you just type in law society and you type in what specialist it is that you're looking for in the area of law and your location so it's quite easy and then you can find all the solicitors that will specialize in that field that you can contact and it'll come up with their contact details now i'm quite active on social media um so people can reach out to me directly as well uh, people can google my name and then it will come up as to where i work they can get hold mm -hmm. of my details from there. I've got LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook. Um, so there is that presence there. If people want to reach out to me directly, I'll definitely hold their hand and I'll make sure that, of course, uh, whatever it is that they're struggling with or lacking courage in, we can, we can help them get out of that situation. Okay, so tell me the difference um, in, in the three things that you do. So... Um, You've you met when I was looking looking at your sort of wonderful fighting career graph. You you've done you've obviously done your solicitors exams and then you you put, you work as a solicitor. You deal with litigation and then you deal you've done something to do with a mediation. What is the difference between each of those fields and which kind what which kind of situation will warrant say a litigation and b say uh, mediation? Okay. So litigation, what is litigation? It's basically you starting a process um, to take someone to court to get what often people say justice. Now, a lot of the times what happens is people get quite caught up in the idea of um, obtaining this justice that they call it, but really and truly what happens is they end up sometimes causing themselves a lot of stress and hassle because it's not just the courts in England and Wales, it's actually courts across the globe that are in backlog. Uh, whether it's down to this pandemic that we've been in, but these, these issues have been ongoing for such a long time. Now, litigation is issuing a claim against somebody 
and taking them to court. And uh, that process is quite lengthy. It can take a few years, maybe sometimes longer, or sometimes maybe quicker, depending on the value of your claim, um, to get a final hearing where the judge will decide on the basis of evidence. Now, in courts of England and Wales, a lot of the decisions that are decided by the courts are based on what the stat what the law says, which is the statutes, and also what the previous decisions have been. So authorities from previous decisions um, can be and quite commonly used. Um, now that day, by the time you reach that day, you're you've dealt with stress, emotions for such a long time, years as I as I say um, it can be and I see this in my own cases that it can be a long time before people get their final day in court so it's a long process people before they before they issue a claim they have to be prepared for the fact that you know it's not a quick issue the claim and then you you get you get a judgment um, it's it's you've got to follow a protocol which is called a civil procedural protocol you there's certain things that need to be done within that protocol after the claim is issued and once you by the time you've done all of those things yes it can easily take you a very long time and not not to sort of mention that if you've got legal representatives appointed um, your the merits of your case can change at any time so there could be evidence that somebody else, uh, the other side will present, which could heavily have an impact on the strength of your case. So you run that risk of potentially not even going to trial because the merits of the case will change. Now, contrary to that is mediation, which is often encouraged by the courts, because one of the main principles of litigation, just sort of going back is, to try and settle disputes. You've got an obligation before you issue proceedings, you've got an obligation to try and settle disputes by what's called an alternative dispute resolution method. And within that methods, within the ADR, what we call it, you've got mediation as one of the one of the um, methods that, that's heavily encouraged by the courts. Um, it's compulsory in family cases. So when people are going well, to stop you for a second, which is very important mm. because a lot of the ladies, uh, Alve, albeit sort of they, they do it um, sort of anonymously, uh, put, it on, put, put up a post on several sort of uh, social media groups uh, where they say, oh, you know, they're going through a really difficult time. They've come to a point where their marriage has come to an end and they need to reach out to, uh, to a lawyer who, who they can get some advice from. Now, obviously this in this specific case, it would be to do with a marriage, but in your, in, in terms of, uh, you could they just first come to you and say you know what just explain to me how this works yeah absolutely absolutely they're entitled to do that with with myself or anybody really because knowledge is power so unless you know what you're opting in for you know why would you engage in a process that you're not sure about so you've got to feel that you know what you're doing so you know with with whether it's litigation or whether it's mediation that you go for, you're entitled to ask me or your lawyer or your mediator, how will it work? You know, what, what am I expected to do in this mediation? You know, there, there are things um, that you have to sort of think about if you're trying to avoid going down the route of um, litigation, i.e. through the courts. Um, if you're gonna go for mediation, you've got to think, well, you've got to firstly be committed to wanting to find a resolution uh, to the dispute in a quicker way. Um, and you've got to also be creative in your mind to think, well, actually the court might not be able to give us this decision, but mediation allows people to just reach whatever settlement it is that suits them at the time, which right. they may not necessarily get in court. And notwithstanding, it's, it's a lot quicker and a lot cheaper. I've been often told this uh, yeah. uh, that you know it's most most cases are usually settled out of court because yes. it's too easy a process to to go there. So um, you know a lot of people use this and you see it a lot on, in television programs. You see it a lot um, on you know just general usage. Um, I'm going to sue you, or you know this person has landed me. They've sort of uh, done things of that level to me which I've sort of um, affronted my person. Now tell me what is the difference uh, between um, someone uh, suing someone and any slander and are there are there marked differences and pe should people be be wary of the process or if you actually 
reach out to a lawyer they'll actually guide you and give you even costings for yeah. it so so usually that's that's what we're obliged to do um i think before getting before Very getting your head before getting yourself committed to to the litigation process i would normally tell my clients what it entails um i would normally set out cost estimates to say well actually if you're trying to claim back twenty thousand pounds or thirty thousand pounds that somebody's not paid you uh, on an unpaid invoice or whatever it is um, then you're looking at spending x amount in legal fees however let's try and deal with this stage, stage by stage process let's see what happens when we send an initial letter of claim out let's see their response um, because it's important to see what the other side's defense is going to be before uh, you commit yourself to issuing proceedings in any event. And you, I notice where you talk about the various case examples where you, you deal with fraud litigation for group of investors in Dubai, you've done sort of management company work, you've done landlord, landlord disputes, um, loan agreements, breach of contract and dilapidations. These are quite... Um, intriguing and usual fields that people come across, especially loan agreements, especially landlord disputes, especially I've, I've had a, uh, someone quite close to me who gave some money to a business in Dubai and then got stuck oh. and cannot get, you know, has been trying to recover it and, um, and just not been able to get them. How do you employ investigators and how is that process? So where does a solicitor come in? So, okay, so I'll give you a case example, which, uh, which might help put things into perspective. So I acted for a group of investors um, who are British. Now, um, of course, with lawyers and solicitors, uh, we've got, we can only, if you're qualified in a jurisdiction, such as I'm qualified to practice in England and Wales, I can only act for um, any matters that involve um, litigation in England and Wales. Now, these group of investors live abroad, uh, but they invested in a company in that country. For example, this was, this was a case in, um, outside outside of the EU completely. So they invested money and what happened was the person who was running the company took the money out, so all the investment money, transferred it into his personal account and he came back to the UK. Now the other investors, whilst they're British, they're stuck outside and they don't really know what to do. So they looked around for lawyers and it's, you know, this these kind of cases are not so common because people will um, often, quite often, there's not many lawyers who can actually deal with these kind of disputes. Um, somehow it, it landed on my desk and um, I assisted these group of investors. This was money, sort of, we're talking about millions of pounds here, right? So we hired investigators to find out where this company director had gone with, with their money, track, tracked him to the UK. So I was happy, right? That's fine, I can deal with it. Um, we got a court order to um, freeze his assets because investigator found out, did a very comprehensive report. Um, the investigator found out that um, he was, he had private number plates and uh, mansion that he was living in, kids going to private school, all sorts. Um, so all of that is, is my client's money, the group of investors. Um, so we managed to freeze his assets by applying to court for what's called a freezing injunction. Um, and then we managed to successfully, um, well, it's, it's actually successfully obtained the freezing um, injunction, but now it's not been listed for a hearing, but we're quite hopeful that we'll be able to recover those sums from um, our client because freezing injunctions to freeze somebody's bank accounts and assets, it's a very, very big deal and co courts don't really grant it very sparingly. So we were successful in that. So there must be merits um, in what the court's views are. Um, so yeah so it's 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 things can be dealt with how do you find somebody who can help you i think it really is a case that we went back to the point of finding and go on law society and type in what it is that you're looking for even often you know if you google um fraud litigation specialist or litigation specialist um you'll be able to come up with profiles or it could be personal personal recommendation you don't you're not obliged to go with somebody that you've just obtained uh, had a quick chat with if you can't trust them to deal with your case no matter how good they are you're not going to um instruct them so i think it's important to 
trust your lawyer and know that they they we, we're all serving your best interest but personalities sit different with different people so I think it's best to shop around yes yes I think one of the things that people kind of hesitate with is when they have a lot of paperwork when they are stuck in a situation where they could get legal assistance they kind of shy shy away from it in, in especially the Asian scenario is they'll say, oh, well, this is too much paperwork. I don't understand. Um, legal expertise is going to cost an arm and a leg and I'm not just going to do that. Mm -hmm. It is actually quite um, helpful to know that if someone just had a small problem and they needed some legal assistance, they could reach out to people like yourselves mm -hmm. who are committed to help ladies who could be stuck in all sorts of situations. Um, from here where to are you you've been you know doing this uh, do you work um with a firm do you work uh for yourself what is it that you actually do and women who are listening to you at any point what should they aspire to from you and be inspired by if they need to I think if I could if I could pick a personality trait of mine that could inspire somebody, although I think I'm a small fish in the sea, uh, but if anybody could, um, if I could share something, I would say just be a go-getter. I think it's so important to go to opportunities and not wait for them to come to you because um, I think a lot of the times we ex make excuses for ourselves to say, well, I, I sent this application, they haven't come back to me. I've always been the kind of person, well, give them three days. If they haven't come back to me, I'll follow up. I'm in need of that experience. I'm in need of that job. Um, yes, of course, at this um, stage of my career, I feel that they also need me to. <laughs> but um, starting off, I think, you know, anything you're passionate about, anything your heart uh, feels the satisfaction from, um, you should, yeah, just be a go getter, just go after it. And I think failure is just, you know, people get disappointed by failure, but it's just a part of your journey. Um, you're only a failure if you stop. That's true. Um... But I had this situation where I I was talking to a friend and she says, oh, you know, I've, I've sort of made a pitch to this business and, you know, they sort of uh, are responding, uh, but they're not really being clear. What is the difference between, especially because you're from the legal profession, between being assertive and aggressive then? How would you advise someone to, to deal with something without being aggressive? Oh, this is, this is a heavy question. <laughs> I think yeah, they always a lawyer is going to go for a fight. So you yeah. your, you work with as a mediator. So there is a thin line, right? Yes, I think I think the difference between the two, it is it is like you say, it's a very thin line. I think um, aggressive can actually be you can view that as quite a negative um, trait. Yeah, trait. Yes, it's a negative trait, which is not going to achieve um, it's unlikely to achieve. I wouldn't say not going to because some people will receive aggression in a very fearful manner and will give in. But I think, you know, if you're talking about um, getting getting your way in, in, in sort of um, the most productive way possible for somebody then not to actually change their mind uh, later because they're no, they no longer face with your face or your emails or whatever it is, it's, it's best to sort of maintain that fine line of assertiveness to state, state your story, uh, be assertive, not foolish, um, aggressive is definitely a no-go. So I think the fine line to attain, it comes with experience in, in, in my profession anyway. So I think if you're going to try and um, get your way, you've got to try and be a bit more diplomatic. Um, okay. It's something I, you know, I'm, I'm constantly learning. So it's, it's a journey. I think we all are. We do things in our different ways. So it's, it's a difficult one to answer, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is a difficult one. I have to actually speak to my, my lawyer and ask him, should I respond to this right now? And he said, you know, actually sleep on it, which I think sometimes is a good thing. And, you know, you get up, you think of different ways to deal with problems. Um, moving to a slightly different topic. I find that um, being Asian, parents sort of want you to choose something that makes money, right? Which is something that people as immigrants to this country will always feel that that could give them security. Um, yeah. In the legal field, for someone who's aspiring to be a lawyer, what would your advice be to newcomers? 
Um, I think if you're, it's a respected profession, I'll, you know, most of all, it's, it's um, my story was similar to go into medicine because um, it possibly pays a, li a lot more. <laughs> Uh, but um, I think if people, if you, if you're passionate about the law, if you're passionate about making a difference to people's lives, uh, you can't just limit yourself to medicine. You know, there are various other professions such as upholding the justice system, where I'm an officer of the court, and I take a lot of pride in that. Is that um, you know, I'm I'm in this profession because I'm representing what the law of this country is in the most positive way and if you're somebody that shares that and if you're somebody that aspires to be that and i think you've got to be prepared a bit thick-skinned um be persistent um and i think keep going that's 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 probably the few things i could i could share but i'm more than happy for people to reach out to me um and and uh, sort of um get guidance because you know it's not easy when you're starting out it really is and i was very fortunate that i was one of the first few in my year to qualify and i the only reason i would say that i could do that was because i wasn't taking no for an answer i had to stand outside shops set, selling leaflets for the firm um i i remember <laughs> if anybody that watches this is from Birmingham Soho Road, I actually used to stand outside a sweet shop and it was raining. And my principal said, um, we've got to promote our new branch. And that's, you know, it, it just meant that I did whatever it took because my heart was in it. So, yeah. That's it. I think most people uh, who choose professions like yourself that are extremely demanding, they have to, and uh, this is something I've learned from doing all these various, uh, uh, show, uh, I would call them shows or programs for inspiring Indian women, where I've sort of uh, spoken to a lot of women who come from very prolific backgrounds. And the three things that they said to me, and I take the same sort of um, perspective from you, where you have to be committed, you have to be passionate, you have to not take, I know negatives and all that, but you have to not take no for an answer. Uh, and the, the last thing that you said, which I think is really, uh, which will stand a lot of people in good stead, would be the fact that if you have a problem, you must reach out to uh, an expert like yourself or anybody in the legal field and not hesitate to kind of ask questions. Yeah, and I think... It's important, Ashne. Sorry to sort of interrupt, but um, before I lose my train of thought, I think we've come a long way. We've come such a long way as women to actually be in these kind of professions that we are. We're leading. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not just we've not just entered these professions and we're doing an average job. We are leading. And I think it's a shame to hear that people might hesitate because that's not the times we live in. That is not the women that are being raised this day and age. And that's not the women that, you know, we want to be an example of. So, yeah. Yeah, my daughter. I mean, I said to her the other day, you know, could you help me with something? And she asked me straight point blank, did you ask Baya? And I said, I would ask him as well. He's just not around. But her, her answer was, it has to be fair and equal and balanced. And I think that is a generation that is being raised because they now feel that they are empowered. And I, I do like that you would probably meet a lot of empowered women and you're used to. I mean, I can, I mean, the one person that I met that inspired me truly was, I think, uh, Shri Blair. I thought she was amazing. And uh, recently I've been watching Netflix, uh, Michelle Obama. And I mm -hmm. thought, I think, you know, people that have pursued a career in law require certain tenacity and uh, there's nothing wrong with having that. And there's nothing to uh, stop women in our generation to keep doing what they're doing. Um, as a, a sort of a roundup of today's chat, um, just to kind of um, summarize what you what you do and how you will be able to help women, uh, why don't you take this next minute to explain to people what you do and what you can do to help make their lives easier. Also, there is one uh, question that I have for you, and I'm sure a lot of women have this, and I only found out when I had to deal with this in a stern barrister. Uh, Actually, the solicitor does this job and the barrister does this job. And, you know, it's different from India. So explain to us that 
aspect, which is totally different from what I said in terms of summary. So if you can deal mm. with the first. Oh, and I have a question from someone called Vidushi. Go for it, Vidushi. What would you like to ask? If you can unmute yourself and uh, is that a friend? Is that someone you know? Or is that yeah. someone who just joined? Yes, it's somebody I know. So it's a good question. Um, is it hard to manage this profession with the social life? Um, it's only as hard as you make it. I think there's 24 hours in a day. So um, how many of that you spend sleeping and how many of those uh, hours that you spend doing things that are going to matter in the coming years, it's, it's your decision. Of course, not saying that sleep is not important. I think it's important what we feed our body and how much rest we get. It's all, it's all a balance. Um, but I think if you want to do something, um, you won't make, make excuses for it. So, yeah. But going back to your, hopefully that's answered your question, uh, Vidushi. Um, Darshini, going back to what you were saying about the differences between what a solicitor's job is and what a barrister's job is, is yeah, it's quite distinctive to what you get in India, uh, which is, um, as far as my understanding goes, is that um, if you are qualified, you're qualified to um, attend trials or represent your client in court. Uh, now, in the UK, it's a little bit different is that solicitors would normally work on the case up until um, when it requires a representation in court. So there are some solicitors who have done the top up qualification to uh, appear before higher courts, um, tribunals and county courts, which are um, those are the courts that we can appear in. Um, but it's just not cost effective for solicitors to do that because we would charge by the hour mostly. So it's cheaper for us to instruct a barrister who's in court day in and out. That is their profession. So they would represent clients at hearing. So we will brief them as to what the case is about, provide them with bundles um, for the hearing and they will go and present the case in court. And usually because they do this for a living, um, and solicitors do what we do, i.e. prepare the case up until the trial and assess evidence and um, do whatever's necessary for the barrister to do their job. Um, we, we don't often sort of tend to get involved um, and step on their toes because there is that clear distinction. But you can do if you want to. There are some solicitors who are passionate about advocacy. So they will appear in courts, um, but um, the foundation and preparation of a case um, is, is equally as important as appearing. So we share those kind of roles um, in the UK. Excellent. So as, as we come to the end of this program, uh, it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you about all the various things that you do, how you support uh, women and how they can reach out to someone like yourselves through the Inspiring Indian website um, and through uh, the various um, teams that actually are a part of Inspiring Indian Women. Um, Rina, what would you like to say as like a closing argument for sort of coming to someone like you for support, help, or just simply advice? I think my simple way is don't be afraid. Um, I think the nicest the nicest way I can put it is if there is an issue uh, speak about it don't just suffer in silence um, and if it means that you're speaking about it to me because um, you've liked watching this um, this today or you can relate to me or you feel that you can trust me I'm always available to help you but if it's not me if it's somebody else that you feel comfortable with it's very important to actually raise your voice we are not in those times where we can be blackmailed or where we have to fear uh, certain individuals um, from, from you know who will who will suppress our voice. I mean, I think those days are gone. Those days of fear are gone. Um, and I think if you just look around and Dashni, as you mentioned about, you know, Michelle Obama, you know, it's I'm listening to her book and I've watched her biography. It's, you know, yes. there's some great leaders. You've got to only look around and think, um, think of the Prime Minister, New Zealand's Prime Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, all these women, you know, they are leading the countries and I think they're doing such a great job. So why do we cut ourselves short? Um, why is it that we think, oh no, times, times were different in my time? Well, no, you're in this time today. So I think act, we must act like the times we live in and yeah, yeah. 
Excellent. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Rima Chuk. We uh, are ex extremely grateful for your time and thank you for sharing all your support. Um, we have so many more programs up until June, so stay tuned. If Rashmi would like to say a few words, um, you're most uh, welcome to. Otherwise, I'll just uh, say thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. I believe um, Vandana's got a question. She's raised her hand, unless that's just uh, an emoji. No, maybe it's just a, a hand. Okay. Yeah, Let Vandana her. wants to say something. Right, okay. Vandana, please go ahead. She's raised her hand. Yeah. Hello, yeah, Vandana. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to know, you know, like in this, in this pandemic, uh, we all, you know, down to the businesses and everything. Like my husband has few takeaway and, uh, you know, it was not running very well. And is any way, you know, now it's coming up, the business is coming up. Is any way you can help me or... Um, so, Vandana, it's important that, um, I mean, I'm happy to speak to you afterwards to give you some some legal advice and steer you in the right direction. But oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, there are lots of uh, government uh, schemes that are around to help you get out of that debt because, mm -hmm. you know, most of us might um, relate or have somebody that is in the catering industry and they've heavily suffered um, because of the pandemic. So um, debts and things like that um, have been accrued, uh, but there are there are sort of support system out there to be able to get you out of that situation. Or if there is any issues with your um, lease that, that you might be facing, that's something we can look at from a legal perspective. But I'll initially like to have a chat with you to point you in the right direction. Um, oh, so that's great. Go down the legal route. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Rima. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. Bye. So I think um, if there's any more questions, please shoot. Otherwise, um, I'm going to say thank you and a very good evening to everyone. Anything Thanks. else? Uh, anyone? Yeah, Darshini. Darshini. Thank you so much, Darshini. Uh, you do mm -hmm. a perfect job as far as uh, these topics are concerned. Uh, Rima, I'm, I'm like, uh, I just wanted to know one or two things like, you know, uh, is it very easy to go for litigation? Like, is it... Uh, you said that it's a long process. It's uh, something like recently, you know, I used a person for mediation, you know, mm. a lawyer. But what was happening was, uh, because I went through this experience myself, what happened was I was telling the person and she very unofficially helped me be a mediator because I wanted to end this uh, particular issue. So she was posting what I was saying to her and she was sharing, you know, it was on phone. Yeah. And uh, it went on, I shared, she shared, but she was not ready to agree, you know, that, okay, mm -hmm. uh, then I was like, what happens when there's a block? The person kept on harping on the same thing again and again and kept on saying that you did this, you did this, you did this. And I was, I was like, uh, I, I was giving my point of view. Mm -hmm. It didn't lead to anywhere. And uh, this particular lawyer actually helped, uh, uh, told her that you cannot mention uh, the name or you cannot write in social media you cannot answer anywhere you have to uh, restrain yourself from saying uh, you know mentioning the name because it was all about uh, bullying uh, it didn't end up you know anywhere and the person was not agreeing so what happens in such cases like maybe a quick one I think yeah. what uh uh, just to kind of summarize uh, what uh, Rashmi is trying to get at is she we reach out to mediators, um, mm. come to a point where there's a status quo. Yeah. Where should, what level can you take up to and what would be the solution post-mediation or at the juncture of mediation? 
Okay. Well, I think impasse can be reached. Um, you know, that, that's why parties instruct lawyers. Now, if you if you've got a mediator, you're in a mediation. It's always best to do a mediation. Now you can do it online, which is just as effective, or you can do it in person. Now I'm not sure, uh, Rashmi, whether the mediation was um, just sort of informal or whether it was actually it was informal yeah yeah i think you know you get the most out of it when you've actually got two parties together whether it's in a zoom session or whether it's at a venue where you've got them in different rooms and mediators traveling in and between speaking to each party and really trying to the role of a mediator is we identify and we train to identify the reason behind the conflict sometimes it's actually driven by emotions Sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's future security. So there's various reasons why people get into these kind of situations. And, you know, I'll give you an example, which I quite often refer to is uh, mediating um, inheritance disputes, right? So now, you know, it's quite relevant for our group to also, um, you know, hear this story, I think, is because there's mainly women it's going out to, is that you know, growing up in our communities, in our Asian communities, you can quite often get less of a preference over, over your um, male siblings or sibling. Now, if in that case, you've suffered that or felt that all your life, whether it's valid or not, whether there is any genuine reasons for it or not, but that's just how you felt. Now, your parents then end up leaving um, something more towards your brother. Now, the sister's going to say, well, actually, and that quite does happen. And there's so many of these inheritance disputes is where the sisters are saying, well, actually, the will is invalid. They're challenging it because that's their time now to break out of those shy inhibitions that they might not have done when their parents were around. And this is now their time to get that sort of get all of their anger and frustration out against that sibling. So in mediations, we're quite often identifying that it's actually a built up of frustration over the years. And how do you calm that situation down is a simple apology can, can work wonders um, to actually, you know, if someone's on a level 10 of, 10 of conflict, you can bring them down to a six or maybe even a five where potential settlement talks are possible. So you can only do that, obviously, if you're in a physical environment or you can see the parties together in one room or whether it's on Zoom or whether it's otherwise. But even, even through the day of mediation, if it doesn't settle, then of course you've got, you know, it's all without prejudice. So nothing is ever sort of disclosed outside. Now, what you've gained from the whole process is, um, idea of what the other side is going to say in court, whether it's for their claim or whether it's for their defense. Now you're better prepared, fine, a settlement didn't reach, um, but you're more set for what it is that they're likely to present in court, more so than you could have been before. Then you obviously get your, get your hearing date and you get a decision made by the judge. Now the control is taken out of your hands and if you're happy with that and you trust the justice system, which everybody must because it's there, because it's the justice system and decision, the justice is delivered, then yes, you must just wait for that time. Yes. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, it, yes, it enlightened me uh, quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think um, it's a great idea to avoid court and uh, avoid all these spending of money and, you know, hard-earned uh, money, uh, especially, you know, court, it just takes ages and ages to get to a solution and justice. So, yes, um, uh, thank you very much for this very useful session. And uh, Rima, it's been lovely listening to you. You are a young solicitor and I can see that you are going to do very well in life. Got a lot of time for yourself. Wish you all the very best and hope to see you more and more and hope to see you shine throughout. Thank you so much, Darshini Joshi, you. for your time. And uh, we really value all those who come here and support inspiring Indian women. Each one of you deserve a warm, warm uh, hug, I should, I should say, because you are there and you motivate us and inspire us. Manjulika, thank you so much for being part of this show and session. Uh, Manjulika has always been a great support to us at Inspiring Women, and she's an RJ from Scotland, from Avaj FM Radio. 
Thank you so much, Manjulika. And uh, uh, what we have for everybody, day after tomorrow, we have Darshini, you know very well. We have Bollywood Antakshari, right? 25th. Sunday, 25th Sunday, yeah. So we are all looking for that Antakshari where Darshini Joshi and Dharti Vasani will be hosting the show on Sunday, this Sunday. We want to just send a strong message to India. Stay strong, stay strong, be positive. Uh, we will get out of all this. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to mention that word also. We will fight it back. We will get out of it. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Take care of yourself. Do a lot of yoga. Do a lot of breathing exercises. And we'll be back soon. Take care. Manjulika and Rima, everybody. Bye. Thank Come you. back you tomorrow bye -bye. for Bollywood and Takshri. Same Zoom ID. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.